My name's Joe Biden, and I'm a lifetime member of the NAACP. And I am all in. as hell. I'm truly honored to be here, to meet at this tense moment in this country. And it is a tense moment. Just a few days after the assassination attempt on Donald Trump, we're grateful he was not seriously injured. We continue to pray for him and his family. It's time for an important conversation in this country. Our politics has gotten too heated. I've said the Oval Office on Sunday night as I made clear throughout my presidency, we all have a responsibility to lower the temperature, temperature and condemn violence in any form. <laughs> you got to remember, in America, we're not enemies. We're friends. We're neighbors. We're fellow Americans. Most importantly, we must fully and firmly reject not only political violence, but violence of any kind, period, no exceptions. We have to say with one voice, the violence is not the answer. That's what we should rally around as a nation. That's the unity I'm talking about. More children in America die of a gunshot wound than any other reason. That's stunning and that is sick. And it's sheer cowardness if we do nothing about it. So, if you want to stand against violence in America, then join me in getting these weapons of war off the streets of America. An AR-15 was used in the shooting of Donald Trump, just as it was an assault weapon that killed so many others, including children. It's time to outlaw them. I did it once, and I will do it again. And that's what I'm going to do. Well, here's the truth about why Donald Trump's presidency was hell for black America. He tried to repeal Obamacare to kick millions, I mean millions of black Americans off their health insurance. He had a $2 trillion tax cut that overwhelmingly benefited the super wealthy, the biggest corporation, and exploded the federal debt larger than any one president has in one term. He left no room for us to do what we should be doing, invest in things that affect people's lives, like child care, elder care, and so much more that grow the economy and help people. His mismanagement of the pandemic was especially devastating to black communities. Oh, I, I know, because in other countries, other communities of color. That economic crisis drove up black unemployment, decimated small black businesses, and you peacefully protested George Floyd's murder. Donald Trump called for the National Guard to go after you. What in the hell's the matter with this man? <laughs> no, I'm serious. Go figure. From a guy who spread the birthism lie against Barack Obama, saying he wasn't born in America and he wasn't a U.S. citizen. Of course, here's what he thinks of black jobs. I love his phrase, black jobs. <laughs> it tells a lot about the man and about his character. Folks, I know what a black job is. It's the Vice President of the United States. I know what a black job is. The first black president in American history, Barack Obama. I was vice president to Barack, and she is my vice president. I nominated the first black secretary of defense in American history. He's doing one hell of a job. I nominate the first black woman to the United States Supreme Court. The race
differential wealth gap is the lowest it's been in 20 years. Inflation is down in three years and coming down further, and we're going to have, as they say, a soft landing. Folks, you're going to see us grow faster and faster. That's not just my view. It's the view of 16 Nobel Prize winning economists who put out a statement looking at my economic plan and Trump's. They said, my plan will continue to lower inflation, continue to grow the economy. Prices are falling for cars, appliances, and groceries. We're going to keep co corporate greed at, the, at, at bay. But here's the thing, what he said about Trump, they said, his policies will cause a recession. No, this, this by the way, these aren't, this aren't a democratic outfit. 16 Nobel laureates. We need a vision for the future. Here's my plan for the first 100 days of the second term. Kamala are calling on Congress to pass the John Lewis Voting Rights Act. I did all that I was constantly able to do with executive authority, but we need the act. And we need to pass the Freedom to Vote Act. And I'll sign them both into law immediately. And guess what? Come hell or high water, we're going to restore Roe v. Wade as the law of the land. I know. I know you're saying, Joe, you may not have a Congress. Well, guess what? You all told me I couldn't pass the Inflation Reduction Act. You all told me I couldn't face the Anyway, we did it <laughs> with your help. Republicans blocked police reform in Congress. So I signed a historic executive order on police reform. And I'm going to come back and we'll sign George Floyd and Policing Act into law come hell or high water. Not only going to stop MAGA Republicans, I'm going to stop them in their program on 2025. We're going to stop them from cutting Social Security and Medicare. I'm going to expand Social Security and Medicare by making the very wealthy begin to pay their fair share. We're going to bring rents down, as I said. We're going to build 2 million affordable homes. And cap rent increases at 5% a year so corporate landlords can't gauge. Anyway, I don't want to get going. I'm going to get very upset. But what the, they're, they're just gouging America. And we're going to keep relieving student debt. And we're going to end medical debt. We've already made sure medical debt can no longer be put on a credit report. Well, I'm working with states to wipe out medical debt for pennies on the dollar so it's not hanging over you the rest of your life. We're going to raise the federal minimum wage. Our first term, we capped the cost of insulin for seniors at $35. Total, total drug costs for seniors beginning in 2024 at 5 at $2,000. And some of those cancer drugs are $10,000, $12,000, $14,000 a year. But the second term, we're going to do that for not just seniors, for everyone in America. And by the way, not only saves lives, it will save taxpayers. Just what I did on the first round on dealing, dealing with Medicare. It saves the taxpayer $160 billion because they don't have to pay these exorbitant prices to these, anyway. This year, Medicare is negotiating lower prices for some of the costliest drugs in the market. That threats everything. That treats everything from heart disease to arthritis. In the next term, we want to go further, give Medicare the power to negotiate lower prices for 50 drugs a year, not 10. That not only will save lives, it's estimated to save the taxpayer another $200 billion a year. This is saving taxpayers' money. And by the way, if you notice, all the stuff they said big spend to Biden, we have lowered the deficit, not raised it. We've increased economic growth. Folks, here's what else I'm determined to do. I'm determined to end Trump's, track, Trump's tax cuts for the very wealthy and big corporations and make the tax code fair 
and ease the burden on working people. I kept my commitment that no one making less than $400,000 would never saw in my life till I got elected president will pay a penny more in federal taxes. But here's the deal. We have in America, since the pandemic, 1,000 billionaires. 1,000. You know how much in federal tax they pay? 8.2%. That's their federal tax, 8.2%. We're going to make billionaires pay a minimum of 25%, which is low. No billionaire should pay a lower tax rate than a teacher, a firefighter, a nurse, a janitor. That's simply ridiculous. And when we do that, that alone will generate $500 billion in revenue over the next 10 years, allowing us to lower costs for families and save the government money. We can do more on health care, child care, bringing down the federal deficit, and so much more. This is not rocket science, folks. But they've convinced us that any spending of money is costly. It's saving money. By God's truth, it's saving money. 